Hello and welcome. It's Keith from the Keith Speaking Academy and the YouTube channel English Speaking Success. Today, I have another story for you. Stories are fantastic ways to learn vocabulary, develop your listening skills, all of which will actually help your speaking skills develop as well. Today's story is actually all about um, the topic of food. Uh, recently, not recently, a while back, I did a live lesson all about food. Today, we're going to look at lots of the vocabulary there that will help you get a context for that vocabulary and language so you can learn it more deeply. Great. Are you ready? If you are, let's begin. By the way, in this video, in the story, there are two words, two words that are misspelt. They're spelled incorrectly. Deliberately, of course, it's just a test for you. Can you spot which two words are misspelt? <laughs> if you can, let me know in the comments. Let's get on with it. Oh, by the way, it's a story about a girl called Anya who wants to be a chef. And it's called The Chef That Froze. Now, freeze can have two meanings here. It can mean that you freeze the food to use later, or it can mean that you freeze and don't move. So when you're nearly, when you're really nervous, maybe you might freeze. So it's called The Chef That Froze. Chapter one, The Amateur Chef. Anya loved to cook. She'd been cooking since she was a little girl, and she had always dreamed of being a professional chef. Friends often said her food was delicious and original, and even the fussy eaters would pig out when they went round to her house for dinner. Now, a fussy eater is somebody who doesn't eat everything. They're quite picky. You can say a picky eater or a fussy eater. So they're picky. They only like certain things. Typically, they don't like greens and vegetables. To pig out is to eat too much of something very informally. But she had never had the opportunity to pursue her dream. She had a good job as a software engineer and she didn't want to risk it all. Oh, I know the feeling, right? You want to live your dream, but you've got security in the job you have. Then one day, her best friend Sarah asked her to cater her wedding. Anya was thrilled. This was the perfect opportunity to finally show the world what she was capable of. <clears throat> so to cater is to provide the food for some social event, maybe a party or a, a wedding. So that's to provide the food. <coughs> Very often, we have a professional caterer who will organize that. But obviously here, um, Sarah knows that Anya has potential. Anya immediately started planning the menu. She was determined to make Sarah's wedding meal the best meal of her life. She would deliver a spread of the most mouth-watering food on the planet. Now, spread is an interesting word. Um, often, you well, many, many students know it as a verb. When you spread, for example, you spread butter on your toast, um, or spread can be used in many, many different contexts. As a noun... A spread also has different meaning. For example, butter or jam is a spread you put on your toast. Um, but here, a spread means a feast or a banquet, right? A very, very big meal or a lovely meal. So when you put on a spread, it means you put on a, a meal, a really nice meal for friends. So here she would deliver a spread. Mouth-watering food, literally food that is so delicious it makes you saliva it makes you your mouth water because you're so keen to eat it let's move on to chapter two the menu she spent weeks planning the menu and she tasted countless recipes she wanted to create a meal that was both delicious and unique 
In the end, she decided on the following menu. And feast your eyes on this. It looks great. Appetizers or starters. Mini quiche with spinach and feta cheese. What? A mini quiche. Well, they look like this. <clears throat> They're kind of little pastry flans made with egg. Um, bruschetta with tomatoes, ham and basil. Oh, I think that's an Italian dish, but they look a bit like this. And then the main course, roasted chicken with rosemary and garlic, salmon with lemon butter sauce and vegetable lasagna. Gorgeous. Dessert, chocolate mousse or tiramisu. Tiramisu, another Italian dish, looks a bit like this. What a nice menu. Doesn't that look good? Anya was confident that this menu would please everyone. She had something for everyone, from the meat eaters to the vegetarians. She was sure everyone would eat their fill and drink to their heart's content. And she knew that the desserts would be a hit. So to eat their fill or eat your fill is to eat enough until you are full. Drink to your heart's content is to drink enough as much as you want to until your heart is happy or content. And to be a hit is to be popular, right? We talk about a song being a hit, but also a person or a thing here, a dessert can also be a hit to be popular. Everybody loves a bit of chocolate, right? Let's move on. Chapter three, the big day. The day of the wedding finally arrived. Anya woke up early and started cooking. She had a lot of work to do, but she was excited. She was finally going to show the world what she was capable of. Anya worked tirelessly all day. She prepared the appetizers, the main course and the desserts. She even made her own bread and she did it all without any help. Ooh, interesting. The appetizers, as we mentioned, uh, sometimes we call that the starters, but it's the, the small kind of snacks at the beginning of a meal. <clears throat> when the guests arrived, Anya was exhausted but happy. But then, just as the guests were beginning to take their seats, Anya realised she had made a terrible mistake. <gasps> Oh no, what had Anya done? Can you guess the mistake that she had made? Hmm, let's find out. She had forgotten to buy chocolate for the desserts. How can you have chocolate mousse and tiramisu without chocolate? Well, you can imagine what happened next. Anya was panicking. She didn't have enough time to make a new dessert from scratch. She was a bundle of nerves and about to give up when she suddenly remembered a recipe for a quick and easy dessert that she used to make with her mum at her own birthday parties when she was a child. So she didn't have time to make a dessert from scratch. From scratch means from the beginning from nothing. To scratch is literally to scratch an itch um, from scratch from the very, very beginning. Um, she was a bundle of nerves. Of course she was. I mean, a bundle of nerves is to be very nervous. Maybe before your English test, you might be a bundle of nerves. Um, so she was about to give up, but she remembered this childhood recipe. I wonder what it was. Let's find out. She asked her friend who was helping a sous chef to pop down to the supermarket quickly and on her way back to pick up three packets of cereal. Huh. Cereal like cornflakes or Rice Krispies. Um, the sous chef, a word that we borrowed from the French, borrowed, <laughs> stolen. Um, sous meaning under, uh, sous chef, so underneath the main chef. 
um, underneath becoming a Londoner all of, me, all of a sudden, underneath Keith, the sous chef. So it's not the head chef, it's the one below the head chef. To pop down, very British, British expression, to pop down means to go to the shop, to go quickly to some place. <clears throat> Often pop down to the shops. So what on earth is she going to make? Let's find out what happens in chapter four. The surprise. As the guests were finishing the main course and sipping on champagne, the best man and father of the bride were giving their after dinner speeches. So sipping just means drinking little small amounts, right? Little sips, right? It's not gulping, it's just sipping. It sounds like a very refined wedding, right? Very civilized. So you've got the best man um, and the father of the bride were giving speeches. The best man is the best friend of the groom who's going to get married. And he normally um, gives the rings to the groom and makes a speech. Father of the bride, obviously the bride is the woman going to get married. Um, and in England, the tradition, at least in the Great Britain, I think the UK, the tradition is that the best man and the father of the bride give these after dinner speeches. Anya had just enough time to add the finishing touches to her surprise dessert. To add the finishing touches is very much a cooking expression and it's just to make the final adjustments. Um, do you know when you're serving up or plating up the food and you just want to make some special little changes at the end? The finishing touches. You can do that actually not just for food but for any kind of work that you're doing. She had to announce that there was a change to the menu, that the new dessert would be a trip down memory lane for all of them, something that would remind them of home, childhood and love. Wow, a perfect end to a wedding dinner. This is a nice expression, right? A trip down memory lane. Um, to have or to go on a trip down memory lane is... It's to do something or experience something that reminds you of your childhood. Um, so memory lane is to revisit your childhood. <clears throat> so typically, I don't know, maybe you watch a film or a series that you saw when you were a child and you go, oh, this is a trip down memory lane. Reminds you of your childhood. <clears throat> What's it going to be? Let's find out. And then they brought out the dessert and everyone gasps. Just like that. At first, no one was sure what to say. But then some people started laughing. Ha <laughs> ha! And very eagerly, eagerly started to dig in. To dig in is a lovely word. It's more informal, but it's a phrasal verb meaning to, to eat, to start eating the food. To dig, literally, like you dig a hole. Imagine you're digging into your food. It means to start eating your food. The dessert was frozen banana pops. Not bananas, but banana pops. Wrapped in coloured cornflakes. Wow, what's that all about? Well, if you don't know them, they look like this. Bananas in cornflakes. Fun, easy and simple. It was fun tongue in cheek and everyone loved it a perfect light-hearted note to end the wedding tongue in cheek means that something is not serious when you say something tongue in cheek it means it's not serious take it with a pinch of salt it's fun right light-hearted nice Wow, Anya was relieved. She had saved the day and she had realised that she didn't need to be a professional chef to create delicious food. She was a talented amateur chef and that was enough. And that, my friend, is the story of Anya and her cooking at her friend's wedding. Recently, some students were asking me, because we have stories in the gold course as well. They said, what do I do with the story? It's there to review, like this story is to review. But some things you can do, you can just listen to it. Um, you can just sit back, close your eyes and listen to it and go to sleep. Um, you can use it for shadowing. So shadowing is where you listen. And as you're listening at the same time, you try and repeat on top what you hear. It's great for that because it's nice and slow and paced. 
Um, you can use it to repeat different words and phrases. As you're listening, you can just stop and repeat some key phrases and then make some of your own phrases with these with the same words. Most of all, enjoy it. Have fun. Make your learning fun and interesting and you'll be engaged and your learning will be deeper. Hey, by the way, did you spot the two words that were misspelled? Haha. <laughs> well, listen, if you want to find out and check, you can download this story with the correct spelling of everything and you can double check it and you'll find out the answer. That's it for today. Listen, thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, please do subscribe on YouTube and turn on notifications to find out about new upcoming videos. Um, and that's it. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, my friend. Keep practicing. All the best. Bye-bye.